Hello everyone and welcome to MBSC Easy Overcoming Organizational Challenges. My name is Marie and I will be the host for today's webinar. Today we will explore some of the most common MBSC challenges and tactics to help teams eliminate the barriers to broader adoption. Before we begin, I have a few important housekeeping items to share with you. So first, at the bottom of your screen are multiple application engagement tools that you can use. All those engagement tools are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. You can expand your presentation area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. You will find additional answers to some common technical issues located in the help widget at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them through the Q&A. You don't have to wait from the Q&A part. We are here to answer you during the entire presentation. And we will select and share a few questions from the audience after the presentation part. We will try to answer all the questions, but if a fuller answer is needed or we run out of time, it will be answered later via email. Please note that a copy of today's slide deck and additional help materials are available in the resource list located on the right of the presentation area. Lastly, this webinar will be recorded and sent via the email you registered with. It will be also available to watch later on JAMA's website. Now, let me give you some background information about our speaker. So with more than two decades of process and system engineering work in the aerospace and defense industry, Carrie Brixek has developed a sharp eye on how organizations get mired with inefficiencies, cross purposes and miscommunication and how they can retool to become a sleeker, more strategically focused organization. As JAMA Software Solutions Lead for Aerospace and Defend, she helps organizations improve their system engineering discipline using modern techniques to help them compete in the marketplace. So I will let Carrie take it from there and walk you through the agenda. Thanks, Marie. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. An organizational paradigm shift from document-centric to model-based systems engineering can be daunting. The learning curve for systems engineers can be steep, and the return on value is not often immediately apparent. In this webinar, I will explore some of the most common MBSC challenges and tactics to help teams eliminate the barriers to broader adoption. I will also illustrate how JAMA Connect can be used to streamline a collaborative, data-driven approach and provide more immediate systems engineering value to larger numbers of stakeholders. The agenda topics that we're going to go over today are uh, the benefits of MBSC to the broader stakeholder community, best practices for cultural adoption, um, the expected return on value, keys to eliminating documents, uh, and then using JAMA Connect to facilitate the Im implementation of MBSC. So to help us understand the benefits of MBSC to a broader stakeholder community, let's talk about what it is used for. So MBSC, in the words of industry leaders like Encozy, NASA, or Gartner, describe it as facilitating understanding uh, providing aid to decision-making, connecting system relationships, controlling system configurations, providing communication of an overall system picture that's accessible to all. Um, it ensures everyone is working on the same up-to-date material at all times. Um, I see a theme here. Many of these are very human-centric, um, MBSC is designed to, to take that complexity and allow it to be consumed and understandable by everyone. Right? So from a technical standpoint, um, configuration control, versioning, relationship management are some of the, the keys. So why MBSC? Um, you know, Human understanding, decision-making, relationship management, configuration and version, complexity management are, are just not things you can easily achieve when you mire yourself in documents. In a document world, 
Engineers might be manually searching documents, manually managing a section number heading scheme in the document. They might be creating siloed trace information in spreadsheets. Um, they might not know where the latest version of a particular document is or who might have even changed the document last. They might be relying on a single person who is the tool guru because the tool is old and too hard to learn how to use. They might be spending hours or days cross-referencing many data sources just to determine an impact change or consider a trade-off. Now, here we are in 2021, and still so many of us are kind of swimming in, in the sea of documents. Mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and even software engineering, these disciplines have been using models for decades, right? Now, having the best information at the system level is critical. I mean, what we need is this shift, uh, this paradigm shift away from documents and, and, and this shift in the way you think, right? So the, what are the benefits to the broader stakeholder community for MBSE, right? The benefits of a paradigm shift from documents to data that MBSE brings is not merely for the systems engineer to reap, right? The new ways of thinking about the system being developed and the new structure of the data itself benefits everyone. Now, I'd argue that the system view is the most important view of all. I think most of you are systems engineers out there, and I think you tend to agree. Uh, MBSE engineers uh, MBSE allows engineers to work successfully at greater levels of complexity, right? It also improves the communication between the technical communities as well as the business and even the customer, right? It provides visibility of the gaps that you might have, errors, misalignments of the system design. You know, these problems, you know, those kind of problems might result in defects in the system or cause design rework, or cause missed requirements or even dropped requirements, right? You know, some of the MBSE challenges, there, there are challenges out there with adopting MBSE. You know, the benefits that MBSE promises do present some of these unique challenges to those who are beginning their MBSE journey. Um, the learning curve, you know, it can be steep. You know, learning the language of SysML and maybe your chosen modeling tool takes a long time. You know, and this learning curve, you know, can't be done in silos or via tutorials. You know, the learnings need to be backed by your experience, right? So organizations need to adopt strategies for not just how their systems engineers are trained, but how they will use MBSC, uh, and then how they need to adopt strategies for how the entire organization works and communicates in that paradigm. You know, organizational changes, they're always met with resistance to that change. Um, you know, change has to start, you know, at the executive sponsorship level. You know, I think, you know, that goes without saying any organization adopting any kind of change really needs the executive sponsor in there. And that executive sponsor needs to demonstrate their leadership with their actions. Um, MBSE, you know, lip service, you know, it won't work. They have to be involved. They have to demonstrate that, you know, they're willing to make the changes themselves. Um, MBSE isn't necessarily a one size fits all either. You know, the method and extension of the methods needs to be adapted to the system, uh, the system, the, the actual system of interest that's being developed, right? You know, this again, you know, that adaptation uh, highlights the need for experience at doing that. Right? Systems also need to be developed with modularity and reusability, you know, accounting for how you're going to represent and make use of that modularity and reusability in your system model 
needs to be gotten right kind of at the start, right? You know, you can do all kinds of really cool system modeling and that system model might you know, work well for that one effort. But when you want to go and do a variation of that or use parts of it to develop another system, you know, you need to have some level of consistency to be able to leverage that modularity and, and reuse capability. Right? Um, the financial investment, that's unavoidable. You know, tooling and training alone, it, it's expensive. You, you have to be ready for that. 